Yeah, healthcare is a, a, a huge part of this, and uh, a lot of it comes out of our own pockets. So I knew I needed a better job, and I was I, I was literally sending resumes all over the country to find that better job. And amazingly enough, at the time, there was a job opening in St. John's with the provincial government. So I said, yeah, I'll go to Newfoundland for a couple of years, mm -hmm. uh, beef up the resume, make a few bucks, go back to Toronto and become Jennifer. And I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm a very stubborn person in, in some ways, and I lost this safe and secure job shortly after I made the decision I'm going to come out publicly, become Jennifer, and do it all here. And uh, when I lost that job as a senior analyst for the provincial government, I'm like, that's really not fair. And I'm not surprised that that happened, but what do we do now? And it's like, I can go back to Toronto, and go control, alt, delete with my life, or I can stay here and, and, and try to raise awareness and make a life here. Prove that it can be done anywhere, I guess. And <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've managed to survive. I've had some struggles with uh, employment, um, but I've managed to find enough work to keep myself alive and pay the bills and get through a good portion of my transition. And uh, I guess part of, part of the transition process is the education and awareness piece. You don't try to transition alone. Everyone around you transitions with you. And I kind of knew that I would have to become an educator. And I'm glad there's educators in the room. And I went from being a very quiet, shy, timid person to becoming someone who was accustomed to microphones and TV cameras and audiences. And I knew that the eyes were going to be staring at me. And I figured, well, let's train those eyes to become a little bit more comfortable with what they see and understand why you're seeing it. And that brings us, I guess, to Transgender Day of Remembrance was uh, created by a lady in California in 1998. Gwendolyn Ann Smith, her best friend, was a trans woman who was murdered because she was trans and she wanted to commemorate that. And I guess word quickly spread of this memorial tribute to the point where the event grew each and every year to the point where it's now essentially blossomed from Trans Day of Remembrance to Trans Week of Education and Awareness. It's, you'll see events in all over the world, I think 30 countries, 20 as of 2010, I think we're up to 30 to 40 now. And I guess for me, I've, I guess initially I had some, some, I guess, concerns. The one day that the world pays attention to trans issues is the dead ones. So what about the ones that are still alive? And I kind of led, I guess, the movement to, well, let's, let's expand this. And we've had events at St. John's three or four years in a row. And got positive, I guess, media attention for that. And when I found out about the article in the Springdale uh, Northwestern paper that was written, I guess, in response to the human rights announcement, I thought, you know, maybe, maybe we should make a, a little trip out here. And, uh, just give people an opportunity to just see what trans really is all about. That letter was actually a really good thing. It, I know it was horrible. <coughs> yeah. It was a horrible It was thing, an eye-opener. But I think. it's gotten a lot of people talking. I don't know yeah. how many conversations I've had since then about this yeah. issue. I actually just had a conversation today with my very, very, very conservative Christian aunt, and she was even like, I couldn't believe this is in the paper. Like, yeah, it's so it, like, it's, it's been... As awful as it was, yeah. like you said, it's been it's been good. It's been yeah, it does. It yeah. does. And I think it's yeah, I think it's a really good opportunity to educate people on um, where the line is drawn between opinion and, and hate speech, yeah. Um, yeah. and it allows us to uh, educate on what what appropriate language is and uh, what research you really need to do and familiarize yourself with topics before you uh, yeah. make a public uh, announcement on them. Yeah, it's a great so, Right, I think that um, yeah. it definitely is, and like you know, making sure that you're aware and educated on things. Mm -hmm. I think so, and I guess just to let give people the benefit of the doubt and overcome. There's a lot of old stereotypes about what trans meant in the '60s and the '70s, mm -hmm. and we were considered mentally ill, and we were shipped off to, to mental wards in Toronto, and. I think society's
gotten up to speed, but the, the government policies still haven't come that far, and that's kind of where we're at now. We as trans community and advocates have been asking for human rights protection for a long time at the provincial and federal levels. We're finally starting to see some movement there. And obviously the next step is, I guess, going to be access to health care and training our doctors to, get, any doctor can t help a trans person go through the transition. You don't really need any complex specialist. And, but it's just not part of the, the med school system either. So. I had to twist doctor's arms to say, yes, you can help me. You can do this for me. All you have to do is this, this, this. And uh, I'm excited to, to know that I'd like to consider it, at least from a health perspective, a, a success story. You'd be able to say, I transitioned right here in Newfoundland. I didn't have to use any resources in Toronto. And <clears throat> but there's still, I guess, lots of work to do. Um, being a political pawn is definitely something I, I didn't like, and it's great to finally see movement from all political stripes showing signs of recognition of, and acceptance to the fact that, I guess, gender identity and gender expression are unique entities separate and dichotomous from anything else that's in the Human Rights Act. And the fact that our provincial government announced that they were going to add gender identity to the Human Rights Act is exciting news. Major, major first step towards, I guess, dealing with the inequalities and I guess the next, the, edu the education piece, it'll now, it'll facilitate that process and I think that the timing's great. And it, like you said, there's going to be some people that are going to react in, in strange ways and as we saw in, the, in with that pastor Leslie there, but again, it, that was an opportunity I think to open some new doors and to bring us all here tonight and to get more people talking about it. We did two events this morning when nobody showed up, but Really? People still know that the events happened, yeah. pictures were taken, okay. videos were recorded, yeah. and uh, there'll, there'll be a, a documented history of, that there's been some, some outreach done, and maybe the next time there will be more people that show up in, in some of these smaller towns at 6 o'clock in the morning <laughs> <laughs> on the beach. Uh, see, you can see here, 6 o'clock in the morning, you Yes. <laughs> they eat at 5.30 and then they eat at yeah. the music. That's what we were talking about coming out here. Like, oh, and TV starts at 6. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> More appropriate times like 7 when the news is over. Mm. Yeah. yeah. After so birthday gotta, wishes yeah. have been made. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know you got to get ready for bingo. <laughs> oh, no, bingo. No, here. No. Oh, no, bingo. They don't play bingo here? No, it's bad. So I'm going to oh. quickly run through... Uh, at the last minute, I hit all the politicians of all political stripes at, at all levels, invited them all to attend or, or send in if they wanted to have a statement read. So I've got a couple. And excited to see that the provincial government uh, has, has a note in from uh, Minister Charlene Johnson, who over, oversees the uh, Violence Prevention Initiative, among other profiles. She says, on behalf of the government of Newfoundland and Labrador, we support the right of all citizens to live in a place free from violence, discrimination, and inequality. It's important to raise public awareness of the challenges and the violence that can be experienced by trans people. This event also reminds us to pay respect to those who've lost their lives and to pay respect to those who work hard to raise those awareness. All Newfoundlanders have the right to live, learn, and work in a society free from fear and harm. And this is, Charlene sent me stuff three, three or four years in a row, but this is the first time I feel that the government truly means what they say, and it, it's nice to know that. <coughs> of course, the, the NDP has always been very supportive, and they, they've kind of spearheaded from a political movement to the human rights NDP issues. So. <laughs> So I've got brief statements from both federal and provincial NDP. Jack Harris, member for St. John's East. I'd like to join in support of the International Trans Day Remembrance as we commemorate those who've lost their life due to violence and suicide and recognize the importance of their life. It's a sad reflection of the failure to understand and appreciate the humanity of trans people and the difficult challenges they face. I express hope there'll be better, greater understanding of the trans community and recognition rights and equality uh, for all, for all. Of course, Jerry Rogers became the first out lesbian elected to our provincial legislature there a couple years ago, and uh, she's the critic for justice, and she sent along a few words as well. 
Very excited the government has introduced a bill to amend the Human Rights Act to include gender identity and gender expression. This is a result of hard work by the community and I'm proud to have been part of that work. Congratulations, let's celebrate everyone's hard work and then let's get back to work and move on to the next step of finding suitable health care for members of the trans community. I applaud the incredible work Jennifer has done and her persistence that these issues are made important and that the voices of trans people are always heard. And of course, the former NDP caucus members, who are now independents, <laughs> have submitted as a team, which I think is interesting on its own, Dale Kirby and Chris Mitchellmore have submitted a joint statement. Ooh, are they their own party now? They are <laughs> technically still NDP yeah. party members, but they're not they're part of the caucus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought it was interesting that they yeah. decided to submit one document as a team, which who knows what that means. <laughs> That's the real, th the, the, the media, the NTV would probably like to hear about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On this Trans Day of Remembrance, we Asked to recall the words of Martin Luther King, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do this. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do this. As we, as we remember those who have lost their lives due to anti-trans violence, remember that love can and will overcome hate. On this day we recommit ourselves to working to achieve equality, fairness and dignity for all trans people in Newfoundland and Labrador. one more. Two years ago, this was a long speech from uh, Kristen Malloy, who was the first openly trans person to run for political office at the federal level in Ontario a couple years back. And now that I am, in fact, a failed political candidate, <laughs> having unsuccessfully run for Deputy Mayor of the City of St. John's, I can utter the same speech. I ran not because I'm trans, but because I wanted to stand up for things that I believed in. Never accept limits posed on us by others. And remember that increased visibility in mainstream society brings better understanding and more acceptance and will hopefully lead to the end of transphobia. <coughs> so I guess now we can pass the microphone over to our special guest speakers. <laughs> we have two amazing people and I guess I'll quickly who wants to go first, Sarah? I can go first. Or Cassandra. I can go first. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't mind. Sarah Downey is a, perhaps one of the province's most prominent members of the LGBT activism community. She's lived all over the province, including Mackinson's, Lab City, St. John's, in downtown St. John's. <laughs> she was crowned Miss Newfoundland International in 2010 and became the first out LGBT person, I guess, in North America to win a title of this nature. Yeah. Much more famous than she, took the, <laughs> she ran the 2010 St. John's Pride Week Committee, and she was a political candidate for the riding of Port Grave in the 2011 election. <laughs> ladies, and <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I present you Sarah Downey. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, like Jeff said, my name is Sarah Downey. I've been involved with the LGBT community uh, within our province since early high school. Um, at that time, I came out as a lesbian. Um, and since that time, I've undergone my own transition into more, I guess, fluid sexuality since uh, meeting my, uh, my partner who happens to be a trans man. Um, so basically, myself and Jake both being from small communities in Newfoundland, uh, Mackinson's and Burgess, we come from that a different perspective where we have a very open mind but are uh, held back almost by our geography, uh, kind of. And we only live about an hour away from St. John's um, growing up, but um, we did find that there were there struggles um, associated with where we were from. Um, what the Trans Day of Remembrance means to me uh, personally, and well, in general, it basically asks us to call upon uh, uh, giving respect and remembrance to those who have been murdered or have been taken away early by suicide due to uh, transphobic slurs or uh, an inability to um, get by in life due to uh, roadblocks and obstacles put forward by uh, transphobic behavior.
here. And uh, for me, it means, um, you know, looking at these people and looking at what, it, what has happened to them and thinking about ways that we can prevent that from happening within our own province, within our country, and with it, you know, internationally. Um, there are a lot of trans people within our province who are underemployed or find employment very hard to find. Um, you know, on paper, someone could look amazing, but once presented for an in-person interview or an on-phone interview, um, due to stigma, they could automatically be tossed aside for a, a job opportunity, which, uh, you know, doesn't allow our society to move forward productively. Um, we hope that uh, little events like this can help raise awareness for people outside bigger cities who might, uh, as you say, call it little Bible Belt areas, who aren't really exposed to a lot of members from the LGBT community. And uh, what we tr hope to achieve from things like this is to make uh, people who are part of the community feel more comfortable coming forward, um, feeling like they do have a safety net and support group around them. Uh, we just came from Gander this morning where we had a wonderful conversation with a council member uh, who talked uh, about having us come back to do kind of a trans 101 session with all council members. Um, when we have acceptance and understanding and education at a leadership level, um, uh, persons who may be closeted within the community uh, can feel protected when they come out and uh, feel understood and accepted. Um, by empowering them to, you know, uh, work within the communities, we're um, dragging them out of oppression and actually boosting up our communities by the contribution of their skills and abilities, uh, making, you know, a happier, healthier, more prosperous community. Um, I'd like to draw the attention to the flags that we have back here. Um, I'm sure that you'll recognize the Newfoundland flag and the rainbow flag, which uh, stands for the LGBT uh, community, but I'm not sure if anyone has seen the pink and blue and white flag we have over here. This one is actually representative of uh, the trans community uh, within the world. The pink represents a male uh, presence. The pink, the sorry, blue is male, pink is female, and the white is either a gray area or an intersex. Um, it's designed in such a way that no matter where, which way you spin it, it always looks exactly the same. Um, and it uh, lends back to uh, a transition time and uh, a time of acceptance and tolerance. Um, also being from a small community, I understand that um, acceptance and tolerance and celebration doesn't come overnight. And I think that uh, events such as this are very good stepping stones. Um, when people transition around you, uh, it's not just their transition. Everybody, uh, you know, has a little bit of a paradigm shift in their own mind, and everybody has uh, a different way to go about that, and takes a different amount of time to get to a place that's comfortable for them and make someone around them comfortable. So I just want to say that there's no right way or wrong way to feel uh, when you have something new presented to you, and. Um, I think the most appropriate uh, uh, course of action is to ask questions. If you're curious, um, you know, get informed. Uh, if you um, see somebody saying something that you don't agree with or you know is wrong, you know, it's okay to tell them, you know, uh, you should probably get educated on this. Or I, I really think that uh, this is an opportunity for us all to grow as a community. Um, basically, what we want to do is have a happy, healthy, uh, prosperous community and province. And I'm hoping that uh, these sorts of sessions will bring out uh, the LGBT members of our community and uh, allow them to have allies so we can then go forward with human rights uh, legislation and uh, health care legislation to make sure that everyone is on equal footing within the province. So that's pretty much wow. what we're here to talk about <coughs> today. Um, it affects you're going to chair the Grand Falls meeting now. It, right? affects, really it affects me at a personal level, <laughs> uh, as well as you know, someone who's an ally. And uh, I, I would really love to just see my friends empowered. And I know that the rest of the province just wants to see empowered, impassionate people 
uh, working for a greater Newfoundland. Yeah. Sure. That's pretty much Thanks all I have to for, say. Uh, <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, so there's no coverage for a transitional process anywhere in Canada or just here? Or we can go to Ontario where they do testing to determine if some surgeries will be covered. Right. But it's it's not the nicest type of test that they do. They you know want to determine if it's a fetish or. Right, yeah. Some sort of yeah. Only, yeah. which some people can <coughs> tolerate, but others can't. Yeah. Um, and then you know you're also required to fly to Ontario, and stay there, and come back. Um, and even then, like if it is approved, they can't do the surgery to you. So we right. still have to leave again. Yeah. Where would you, where would you get that done? When you say leave again, would you have to get them done in Ontario? In Ontario, some people choose to go to the states. It varies by province in terms yeah, of which government will cover which procedures under which doctors. And like for a while, Edmund, or Alberta covered it, okay. uh, but then they stopped. They just, you know, anyone who was out at the time, they kind of okay, well, we'll pay for your surgeries, but anyone else coming out, it's just no. Um, I don't know about any other provinces. I only know about that one because I spent a lot of time there. I think we're up to about seven out of the ten that cover something in some ways. Um, the old rule of thumb was that everyone would go to a place called the Clark Institute, Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, Newfoundland is the only province outside of Ontario that now requires a, a Clark assessment to have access to funding. Mm -hmm. The majority of other provinces who do cover procedures have uh, created in-house um, protocol and policies. So mm -hmm. if you're a Quebecer, you can go to a Quebec doctors to be assessed mm -hmm. and recommended for surgical procedures and have funding for, for such. In my case, I, I was adamant, I'm not going to the Clark, I know what goes on there, I don't want to be subjected to cruel and unusual research experiments, I'm prepared to pay for this out of my own pocket if I have to, um, and I did, and there are many things still that will not be covered by this province, and part of what we're doing tonight, there's uh, a, a trans man by the name of Christopher Higdon from the, the Dildo Newfoundland area, who uh, requires top surgery, as it is called, for breast reduction. And uh, no matter what, the government won't pay for it. So he's launched a fundraising campaign as well as uh, a petition to uh, try to seek changes to the health care policies. I myself have filed human rights complaints uh, only to have them thrown out because the Human Rights Commission has limited uh, power and authority to intervene on health care policies. So there's still there's lots of work to, to, to happen, and it's nice to see other, several other provinces have jumped on board within the past five years mm -hmm. to, that have never recognized it or covered it. And the language in the medical dictionaries and terminologies has changed as well. The, the Psychiatric uh, Diagnostic Statistics Manual has been upgraded recently, the DSM, and it's no longer called a gender identity disorder. It's recognized as gender dysphoria. It's no longer in the mental illness category. It's got its own kind of g generic. Med it's a medical condition that requires treatment, but it's not a mental illness. It's a physiological. So it's just a matter of getting policies at uh, the more provincial and local levels to, I guess, get up to speed. And that happens by having people stand up and say, that, yeah, that's me. I need that surgery. And uh, for general information, too, there is a coalition of uh, doctors who are uh, comprised of, like, uh, general practitioners, um, psychiatrists and psychologists, and uh, counselors who are looking to uh, change the legislation in Newfoundland. Right now, the uh, people who are helping lobby are a small group of uh, trans identified and trans allies. So, uh, what this tour helps to do as well is to bring attention that this is happening and hopefully get a little bit more public support because when uh, the government realized that the demand for these uh, healthcare procedures is there and that the community supports the funding for them, um, these sort of legislations get uh, pushed through a little bit more quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. So, shall we? Turn the floor over to Cassandra Parsons, who is a well-known Canadian Tire, <laughs> Canadian tire <laughs> Stock <laughs> Sales <laughs> representative, who uh, has best, perhaps, second known in a secondary capacity <laughs> for having some concerns with our premier. 
<laughs> and the was is what started it for me. not shy of vocalizing <laughs> those concerns sad. on Facebook. Yep. <laughs> but Cassandra's someone I've known through Facebook for, I believe, five and a half years. And we just met today. We met today, so. Right. Yeah. I've been wanting to meet her for years, and I finally did. She saw me on t NTV News. Yep, the very first time I w decided, and that was a great opportunity for me, is to raise education awareness, is yeah. to have an opportunity on to go on television. Myself, yeah. Right? yeah. And over well, the years, media, media has gone from treating us like freaks to treating us like human beings. And I think it's great that the media is finally being a little bit more appropriate from that perspective. So yeah. the media has opened new doors, new friendships, and we'll turn the floor over to Cassandra. Okay. 20-minute speech, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you guys covered a lot of it. Um, I have a small speech written up, but um, my name is Cassandra, and I'm a very strong supporter of the LGBT community. Um, I did identify myself as a lesbian, but in recent events, I've become more open to my sexuality. So um, I don't really have a label anymore. I don't really believe in labels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get to my uh, <laughs> I'll get to my small speech that I have here. I, I'm not feeling too well tonight, but I, I wanted to show up anyway because it's very important to me. Um, I'd like to thank you for showing up to this special event to the transgender community. Transgender Day of Remembrance is a day to remember those in our transgender community who have endured violence, harassment, and have been killed for simply trying to fit into, into society and be themselves. This event is important to me as an LGBT individual because I believe in the equality of every human being. We are all unique individuals who deserve to be treated equally. Again, I'd like to thank you all for attending, and I hope you leave this event with a better understanding of why this inv event is important to our community. Lovely. Thank you for all the great work you've done I'm for coming out. Supporter. Ever since I saw you on the news, you know, <laughs> I, it's a, it better educated me on the transgender community, and I just. I also moved to Edmonton for a few years as well, and I got to know some transgender individuals up there, and it just, it, t it totally changed my perspective on the whole LGBT community, and, yeah. Transgender women came from Robert Turner. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I don't know her. I'm not too sure. I don't know many yeah. people from there. Everybody know knows everybody here. That's small town you can know. I don't know why anybody knows that. I'm not from here. It is, it is. <laughs>